Hi, this is uh, Janaki Ram and this is a presentation on moving data to Amazon S3. So I'm going to start off with what really powers the contemporary applications. Then we'll take a look at how to deal with storage on the cloud, followed by the key concepts of Amazon S3. And finally, a demonstration of moving data to Amazon S3. Today, when we look at the contemporary applications, whether they are social, mobile, or consumer web applications, they essentially deal with four building blocks, compute, storage, networking, and databases. Now, these building block services are accessed by the application through the layers of application services and management services. These layers essentially expose the building blocks through the right set of APIs and makes it easy for the application to consume the building block services. If you are developing your application on physical infrastructure, virtual infrastructure, or even on the cloud, you will have to deal with the four building blocks. Now comparing this with Amazon Web Services, we have exactly the same layers. At the bottom of the stack, we have AWS Global Infrastructure that exposes compute, storage, databases, and networking as the foundational services. And on top of that, we have application services, followed by the deployment and management services. So the application that's sitting on top will essentially deal with these building blocks to gain access to the services like compute, storage, databases, and networking. So this is the big picture of Amazon Web Services. And today's focus is the storage. So why do we need to take storage to the cloud? Today, if we consider the contemporary web applications, it's all about user-generated content. With abundant bandwidth, the media consumption is only getting accelerated. Portals like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube are generating petabytes of content. And consumers are demanding the data anywhere, anytime, and on, 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 on any device. And enterprises are looking for better alternatives to tape-based archival and storage system. Consumers are also favoring sync applications that will keep their data in sync across multiple devices. Services like iCloud, Google Drive, SkyDrive, Dropbox, and Box.net are example of these sync applications. So with storage, becoming one of the critical aspects of today's applications. This needs to be on the cloud where storage can be literally infinite. That's where Amazon S3 fits in. Amazon S3 is a web service that enables storing and retrieval of data. And it offers scalability, reliability, security, and inexpensive way of dealing with the data. Developers, when deal with S3, can get the benefit of infinite scale and can easily dump data and retrieve data from S3. S3 is typically optimized for static content where data is written once but read multiple types, multiple times. This actually includes a variety of data all the way from HTML files to JPEGs, CSS files, JS files, videos, anything that can be stored on the file system. Amazon S3 happens to be one of the fastest growing services from the AWS table. Amazon S3, as of uh, last year, stored about 905 nine billion objects. And the API request peaking at 650K. That did not really stop there. In June 2012, Amazon reported that they are storing 1 trillion objects. And this is in, in last June. By now, this number would have dramatically gone up. And, and this is an indication of how fast the cloud storage market is moving. There are three concepts to understand when it comes to Amazon S3. The first one is the bucket. So when you sign up for Amazon, you get access to S3 and the very first thing that you need to do is to create a bucket. You can create up to 100 buckets. And buckets act as boundaries to isolate resources stored on S3. So it makes it easy for you to classify objects under each bucket. 
And since the bucket names are directly mapped to DNS and are accessible from the browser, they got to be unique globally. Once you create a bucket, you can access it from any browser by typing bucketname.s3.amazonaws.com. Now that's the reason why the bucket names got to be globally unique. Once you create bucket names, then you can start populating the buckets with objects. So an object is essentially a granular unit of storage that's stored on Amazon S3. Each object is uniquely identified through a key and the content of object is actually the value. So in a sense, everything that you store on S3 is a key value pair. And every key value pair or an object can also expose metadata up to 8 KB that exposes additional information about the object that's being stored. Objects are also versioned. That means you can store multiple objects with the same name, but the versions could be different. And just like buckets, objects are also accessible over the web by typing bucketname.s3.amazonaws.com slash object key. So thus, both buckets and objects are accessible from the browser provided there are permissions. So that brings us to the next concept of Amazon S3 and laying out the structure of your buckets and objects. So once you create an account on S3, you'll go ahead and create buckets and then you'll populate each of the bucket with objects. But buckets are not really compared to folders. In fact, with a little bit of changes to naming convention, you can emulate the folder structure. But folders are not really supported on Amazon S3. They are just an illusion and it's, it's almost playing with the object naming convention where you give a common name to objects uh, delimited by a forward slash. But essentially, there is only bucket and an object and folder is just an emulation and, and playing with the naming convention. So, if I want to store multiple objects and I want to classify them into images, videos and docs, I will go ahead and create images.myweb.com, videos.myweb.com and docs.myweb.com. Now these are my buckets and once I create the buckets, I can start uploading my objects into each of those buckets. So this is how you will lay out your structure of storing objects and creating buckets on S3. So if you're wondering how do you secure the data, that's where we have what is called as access control list. So an ACL is essentially a list of grants and permissions. So every ACL has a grantee and a set of permission, permissions. And each ACL can contain up to 100 grants. So you can secure an object by selectively creating ACLs uh, around read, write and full access. You can also enable others to control the permissions and they happen to be additional set of permissions. So once you create buckets, once you populate the buckets with objects, you can secure them by configuring appropriate set of ACLs. Let's understand the functionality a little bit more. So when you're creating buckets, you can populate each of the buckets with unlimited number of objects. And every object can be anywhere from one byte to five terabytes. And each object has a unique key. When you're creating the bucket, you can choose the region and obviously your objects also belong to a specific region. There are no availability zones to deal with when you're creating S3 buckets and objects. Once you populate the buckets, you can access them through standard protocols like SOAP, REST, and BitTorrent. Each object is redundantly stored across multiple facilities within the same region to ensure high availability and durability. Uh, S3 offers high durability and comes with an SLA of 11 nines of durability. This is really huge and gives you a lot of confidence to store objects that enjoy uh, a very good durability and availability. As we discussed earlier, multiple versions of the same objects can be stored on S3. So let me walk you through a demo 
on how we move the static content of a website to Amazon S3. Okay, so now we are looking at the AWS Management Console and under Storage and Content Delivery, I'm going to click on S3. So this takes us to the S3 section of the Management Console where we start creating our buckets and populating objects. So the very first step is to create the bucket. So let me name this as J Gallery. And as we discussed earlier, every bucket is associated with one of the regions. So in my case, I'm going to choose Singapore and then click on Create. So once I click on Create, S3 creates our first bucket. So this bucket currently doesn't contain any objects. So once I have this, my next step is to go ahead and upload. But before that, let me show you what content I'm going to move. So I have a simple static website where I have simple images. Now, if you, if you look at these images, they are being served from my local file system. So I'm, I'm putting all these images under images directory of my local file system. We can take a look at the source and you notice that the images are being served from the local file system. Now, what I really want to achieve is to move these images from my local file system to Amazon S3 and update my application to fetch images from S3. So for that, I go back to the management console and first create a folder. So let me call this folder as images. Again, this is really not a bucket or a container. It is just a naming convention. So once I create an empty folder called images, I'll click on actions, upload, and navigate to the directory where I have all my images. So I'll select all of them, and I'm going to upload these images. So in few seconds, my objects, or rather images, get uploaded to Amazon S3. I finally need to perform one more step. I'm going to select all the objects, select actions, and click on make public. So once I make them public, they become accessible over the internet. Anyone can now access the objects that we are storing here. So I can test this by clicking on the properties and opening this URL. So now you notice that my image is being served from S3. My next step is basically updating my application with this URL. So by the way, this is being served from HTTPS. I can also serve this from normal HTTP. So I'm going to grab this URL, which has the path to my images and come back to the editor where I have the location in the image SRC markup. So now I'm going to replace this with the URL that uh, we have copied from S3. So I'll go to search, uh, replace, and I'm going to replace images with this URL which we have copied from the browser. So I'm going to replace this across all the documents that are currently open in the editor. So I'm going to click on replace all. So this has primarily updated the source code, uh, the source of the images where our uh, images are being stored. So I'm going to save all of them, come back to my application and do a refresh. Nothing changes as an end user, everything remains the same. But now if we actually do a view source, you'll notice that the images are being served from S3. Now this is an indication that we have successfully moved our data from the local file system to Amazon S3. This is how simple it is to get started. So we first created a bucket called J Gallery, 
we created a folder and within that folder uploaded all the images and made them public. The next step was to grab the URL and update our markup with the new location. That was the first demo where we have moved our static content from the local file system to Amazon S3. As we notice, we can actually store anything that we can store on the file system on Amazon S3. That actually raises an important question. Can we store and run static websites from S3? And the answer is yes. In fact, S3 provides massive scalability for static websites. You can move all your JPEGs, uh, JS files, HTM, CSS, everything in a self-contained unit that resides in one bucket on S3 and start serving that content or the static website to your end users. This gives you high scalability without ever worrying about the downtime or maintaining your website. So you can also configure a custom index page and a custom error page in case your users type a non-existent resource on your website you can also show a customized error page this actually brings a very professional look to your application and that's not all you can also configure a custom DNS or a domain name to the S3 hosted website so your end users and visitors will never ever get to know that your static website is actually hosted on S3 this is a great example of how you can gracefully fail over from a website host on EC2 to S3. With some of the capabilities that Amazon provides like uh, latency based routing of uh, Route 53, it is possible to completely fail over from a dynamic website to a static website hosted on Amazon S3. That's not all. You can also combine the static website that is hosted on S3 with Amazon CloudFront to leverage the content delivery network capabilities and cache it across a variety of edge locations uh, that is spread across the globe. This enhances the user experience further by fetching the assets and the resources from the nearest edge location of CloudFront. So now let's take a look at the demo of uh, setting up a static website on Amazon S3. So we are back to the AWS management console and now we have the J gallery folder or rather the bucket that we created in the previous demo. So now if you look at my file system, the browser application that we currently have, this is nothing but a set of static HTML files and the images. In the last demo, we already uploaded all the images successfully to S3. Now in this step, we'll upload all the static HTM files to S3 and also configure the bucket as a website. So let's go ahead and first upload all the HTM files from our gallery application. So I'm going to upload all of them and in a second we'll see everything being uploaded. So now I'm going to ensure everything is publicly accessible by selecting all these objects and click on make public. So now we converted all the objects within this bucket into a publicly accessible uh, resource. We come back to the buckets and when we look at the properties of this bucket there is one option called static website hosting. So here I can enable website hosting and all I need to do is to say my default document is index.htm it could be default.htm anything that you want to serve when the user types the bucket name and the error document which is going to show a customized uh, 404 error. Uh, this is where we'll actually feed the name of the error document. That's all. So now we have configured the static website for our gallery application and it is currently being available here. So let me just click this and there we go. This entire website is currently being served 
from Amazon S3. The images are already on S3 and now we also moved the associated HTM files and we are completely hosting the website on S3. This is how simple it is to move a static website and configure that on S3 with just few clicks. So that was a very quick demo of uh, setting up a static website on Amazon S3. I hope you found this uh, presentation and demo useful. Thanks for watching this presentation and for more videos visit cloudready.tv and if you want to drop a note to me feel free to email me at mail at getcloudready.com and you can follow me on Twitter at janakiramm.